Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try and fix this Atari Jaguar Games console down here. So this was sent in to me in the job lot from Mike from 1UP Gaming and the little note here says Atari Jaguar brought from eBay, already had someone in there, looks like plenty of flux residue, sad face, powers on, no display, you must have a game in the machine for it to work, buy something cheap in case you can't fix. So that's exactly what I did. I went on to CEX and I bought the cheapest Atari Jaguar game that I could get, which is this Cybermorph. I think it cost £5 plus a couple of pound postage. While I was there, I had a look at the controller and I thought, I have to have that. Even if I can't get this working, I still have to have this to see if I can connect it up to any other systems. Because look at it. It puts the Xbox Duke to shame. Look at the size of that. So, there is quite right, it does power on, but nothing's displaying on the TV, but this is interesting. I've set this TV to analogue, I've connected up the RF cable from the Sega Mega Drive here, and I've also tried it with a nice, good quality copper cable. This is RGB, but I'm just using the reds because we're just RCA phono at the back of the Atari Jaguar, and I just converted it from RCA female to a coaxial male. And the TV, when I turn it on here, is picking up seven channels. And on one of the channels, I can just about make out an Atari logo. So watch this now, I've got the game in. Turn it on here, and if I was to go to number... So it picked up seven channels, which is already weird, because when I plug in my Mega Drive, it only comes up with one. So there's nothing on that one there. Well, there's something, but I can't make anything out. Two, nothing. Three, nothing. Four, nothing. I'll come back to five in a minute. Six, nothing. And seven, nothing. But on five, I can sometimes make out the Jaguar logo down here. Let me put it on you. Sometimes I can just see it moving around here. Let's go to fine tune and see if we get any more. See if we can get a better picture. Leave it, uh, let's leave it there. Let's exit out of that. Let's turn it on and off and see if we can see it then. You can definitely see even turn it on and off does something. Is it going to show anything? No. Okay, you're just going to have to take my word that on channel 5 it definitely came up with something. So, let's take it apart and see if we can see anything obvious. This is what I'm thinking straight away. With this model here, you have the option to do RF at the back, but you can also do AV out as well. So I think you can do like composite out and maybe even RGB out. Now I haven't got the special adapters, but maybe I could just, I don't know, maybe I could probe it with the, uh, maybe I could get my scope on it and see. I mean, I don't know what, for example, a video signal looks like, but maybe in this video I can learn. Possibly I can compare it to my Mega Drive here because this is also RF out. And I'm thinking maybe an RF out signal looks exactly the same on an Atari Jaguar as it does on a Sega Mega Drive or Genesis if you're from the States. So uh, yeah, let's, let's first of all take it apart and see if I can see anything obvious with it. Now, just to save any hateful comments, I've ne never taken one of these apart before. I've never owned one before, uh, so I don't know anything about it. So what might be obvious to you may not necessarily be obvious to me. But here we go, we're gonna have the date here. Here you go, look, 1993. So month, would that be revision? So we're looking at the November 1993 was in when this molding was done. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to lift up all of these little tabs here. Here we go. Okay. Now that's interesting. My eye, oh, hold on a minute, there's things going on here. There's things going on here, isn't there? Look, that wouldn't be original. And also, look, we've got a, a wire from there to there. Why? Has this been... Is it possible to mod this? Is that, is that what's happened here? That doesn't look... That doesn't look original, does it? But then again, maybe, I don't know. Maybe this has been nicely done. Uh, 
Hmm. Not sure. All the caps look okay. I wonder has it been recapped? They all look new. Then again, it's hard to tell the, the whole inside's immaculate, isn't it? Right, so we've got a crystal here and a crystal here. So this is the RF thing here. Looks like it's fed from just three pins here. So I wonder, could that be faulty? Should we take the board out completely? There we go, just pop those screws out. There we go. Right, can you see there's another wire here? And as well, the solder on this doesn't look... doesn't look great compared to the rest of it. So these prongs are just to make contact with the, the metal bottom. Now what we got here? It's all nicely put together, isn't it? Revision B. Well, straight away, there's nothing jumping out at me apart from the fact of these wires around the place. I'm going to type into Google how to mod an Atari Jaguar just to see if these things mean anything. And uh, then I'm thinking... Then what I'm thinking about doing is we might be able to output it using just normal AV. You know, I don't even have to wire up the audio at the moment. I could just wire up the yellow connector just for the video. And then, because I know that they're going to be coming off these pins here, I just need to find out which pins they are coming off because these ones here are the AV out and the other ones are DSP, whatever that means, in and out. I'm not sure what DSP means. But uh, that's what I'm thinking. And then if we don't have any display on the RF or the AV, then maybe it's something that uh, there might be some sort of display chip or something that's responsible for that. But if we've got a display on the RF, uh, on AV, it might just mean that this RF module here is faulty. And then we can kind of open up that to see if there's anything inside that that looks iffy. So the internet's come up a winner. I typed in Atari Jaguar mods and a couple of websites down was somebody that asked the exact same question with the exact, I mean, it looks like my board, but it's not. So see these here, these capacitors and this wire here, this is actually a factory mod and uh, it was explained in detail, but basically it's to improve the stability of the console. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. So I suppose they test them at the end of making them and if something's not quite right, they add these to perhaps make it perform slightly better. So that's interesting. So basically this hasn't been modded. And when I look closely at this one, all this is doing is, you know, you can tell that these aren't factory. These look like they've been redone at some stage. And I think the pin's been slightly damaged, the track's been damaged. So all they've done here is just, that is just replacing the track. Because there's a track that goes from that point there to that point there. So uh, that's got nothing to do with anything. That's how it would have left, left the factory. So now, uh, what other things did I learn about it? Apparently, if you unsolder, I think it's this little resistor down here, I think, then uh, you can fit a little switch. So run some wires off, fit a switch, and then that's a mod for doing the 50 hertz or 60 hertz, so, you know, like UK or US, and I think if you do the 60 hertz one, I think you get a bit more game on your screen, so you haven't got borders top and bottom. So that's another little interesting thing. And as well as that, we have the, uh, I've got the pin out for just a composite video. I haven't gone into detail with RGB or anything. This is just composite, just to see if it's working. So basically, I can either take it from L6, which is this top one here. Can you see L6, these capacitors up here? Or if you have a look at the bottom here, these are labelled up 1 to 12. I don't know if you can see a little 1 in there and a 12 over this side here. So basically we've got 
one, two, three, four, five, going to 12, and then we've got them at the bottom as well. So we've got A and B, so the B for the bottom. And if I was to get the composite video, it's on 11B, so that would be this fella just here. So this one here is composite video, yeah, and the one next to it is the ground. And if I want the audio left, that's going to be 1A here, so this is audio left here, and this is audio right, 1B. And then the respective grounds are 2B and 2A. Let's just double check now that 11, that L6. Let me just see if that is going to the same, going to 11B. So let's go to L6 here on this side of the capacitor. I'm just going to rest it on here. Let's see if it's coming up on here. So where are we? 11? Yeah, 11B. 11B and L6. Yes, it is. So I can take it from, from either of those places, yeah? So it's the next day now and I look back at my footage last night and I had over one hour of footage without actually fixing anything. So rather than go through all of that, and then the video being two and a half or three hours long, I might as well just tell you what I did because I haven't actually solved the problem with what I've done anyway. But remember now on RF, I'm not getting any signal at all. It's just basically fuzz all the time. Occasionally I see a really fuzzy Jaguar come up, but it's really, really fuzzy and it's not every single time. So I think I've got multiple faults on this particular board here. So I thought to myself, well, let's eliminate the RF by doing an AV out mod, a composite out mod. And that's exactly what I did. Now, if you have a look, I'll just quickly show you how it's wired up. The video out is the yellow one here, and it goes to L6 capacitor and the shielded side of the capacitor, so that side there. The ground for the video out goes to L16, and it goes to this side of the capacitor, so not the shielded side. I've also then put the audio in as well. So the red one here is the right audio and the uh, white one is the left audio. The red one goes to the shielded side of the capacitor L17 and the white one goes to the shielded side of the capacitor L18. Yeah, so the sides up here. And then the ground for these travels down here, down this green wire and goes all the way down to here where it says U4. There's a little test pad just here on U4 so that travels down there. So maybe down here is to do with the audio. So anyway, when I connected it up, it was, it's, it's, it's really weird. So basically, I plug it in, I turn it on with a game in, and it would just say no signal. Then every now and then, it won't say no signal, it will just have a black screen. And then maybe one in 20 goes, it will come up with the red Jaguar screen, which I will show you now. Yes! It did it. Hold on. Okay. Is it going to do anything else? Definitely came up there. Look at it. Jaguar. It uh, looks weird though. So, is it just an RF problem? Why was there no audio though? Right, turn it off. Mm, no signal. Right, now we're saying no signal. Now that screen there is known as the red screen of death. Apparently when it should boot up, it kind of growls at you. And then I think Atari comes up down the bottom or something like that. But this is just known as the red screen of death, which everybody says is to do with a faulty game or a faulty game cart here, like Dirty or something, or Misaligned or Bent or it could be a pirated game. Now, I've looked at all these pins here, and as well as that, I've resoldered them all down here because they were all bigger lumpy before, so I've made them all nice and small. <laughs> I've also checked for continuity between here and every single point it goes to on this side of the board. Not on this side of the board, I'm yet to do that. 
but it's not making any difference. Now this is the thing that's confusing me. If, for example, every time I turned it on I got the red screen, I would then concentrate just around this area here. But it's only 1 in 20, or it could be 1 in 30, it could be 1 in 40 goes it happens. I've been pressing this button on and off all of last night, and it's so hit and miss. And the RF never has given me the red screen. So 100% there's a problem with the RF, that's one fault. We also have a problem that most of the time it doesn't boot at all. But then when it does boot, it still doesn't recognise the game. So then I thought, well, maybe it could be the game. So what I did is I shorted the pins out, 35 and 36. So if you have a look here, you see next to this link one here, I've just soldered these two together. That tricks the Jaguar into thinking that there's a game in here. Because remember, this won't turn on unless you put the game in. So uh, it's still doing exactly the same thing maybe 1 in 20 or 1 in 30 goes, I will get the red screen. So that says to me, I've eliminated the game now. This game might not work, I don't know, but I've eliminated it because I should be getting the red screen every single time with this. So let me just count along from here. We start at 15 here. So 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. So it's 34 and 35 are the ones you have to short together. Yeah? And that will then should bring you up with the red screen. And but but if it happened all the time, that would be fine. But it's not happening all the time. So I think I've got numerous problems here. RF problem, the fact it's not playing the game even when it does work, and the fact that it only seems to actually boot up, not boot up, but get to the red screen of death one in twenty times. Now looking up online, the red screen of death, the the things that I've looked at just all suggests it's something to do with the game cart. I don't know. So that's where we are at the moment. So then I was looking around this and I noticed that this particular chip here was getting very warm when I turn it on. IPA on this one here, which is the one next to it, and this one. And can you see straight away in the middle there? Look, there you go. So you can see that that is getting hot enough to evaporate that off. Now again, it could be normal, I don't know. And all the other chips weren't, so when I put alcohol on here it would evaporate off straight away and these ones wouldn't. So I swapped this one and this one over just to see if it would make a difference because they had the same markings on. And again, this one still got warm. So whatever was in this place here got warm. So I don't believe it's the chips that's a foot, that are faulty. Maybe it's something feeding this has got a short on it or something. I'm not too sure. I managed to burn the board a little bit in the process of swapping them over, but that's because this board is so thin, which is actually quite good because it means it's quite easy to work on. And then when I was looking at here, I noticed that there was a space for a capacitor here saying C45, yet there was just a little link cable going from here to here. And I thought to myself, oh, well, you shouldn't have a link cable between positive and negative. So I just snipped that just to see if it would turn on. It still didn't turn on. Then I looked online and I found that all the other boards I've seen had a capacitor in its place here. So I went onto the schematics online and it's a 47 microfarad. So I just quickly just tapped it on. You can see I haven't cut it down to size and um, it's still not making any difference. So I think that maybe when they did the factory mod here with this and this, maybe they linked that capacitor. They, did, they took that capacitor out of the equation for whatever reason. So uh, if I do get it working, I will put it back with just a wire from there to there because that did look like it was done professionally. So that's where we are at the moment. So what I'm thinking now is I'm going to start taking out the capacitors and testing them one by one for capacitance and also ESR. If they're testing OK, I'll put them back in. And if they're not testing OK, I will hopefully, I might have a replacement somewhere in my box here that I can put in in its place. Uh, yeah, so right now it is beating me and I, I think it's unlikely I'm going to get this one working because of all the different things that appear to be wrong with it. it, it if it was just the RF, that's fine, I would concentrate all my efforts here. But it's not the RF, the AV seems to work but only every now and then. The card slot doesn't seem to, uh, I've, I've, I've never had it recognise the game even once, even though I've never got it past the red basically screen of death. So for all I know, one of these main chips could be faulty and that might, might be causing it. So uh, I'll keep going but I think maybe this might have to be a revisit video. And looking online, there doesn't actually seem to be much information about fixing up these Atari Jaguars because I don't think it was... I don't think the, the console actually sold that well, so maybe not that many people have them. Uh, so that's where we are. So I'm going to take off the capacitors now, test them one by one, and see if we have anything. 
Actually, before doing that, just to eliminate the power supply, I've got nine volts coming out of my bench power supply there on my hot air station. And can you see I've got the center pin negative because if you have a look at the symbol there, can you see positive is on the outer pin and uh, negative on the center pin. So I've got negative on the center pin. Let's just try it now, just in case it is that. So uh, input AV. No. Okay, so I'm confident now it's nothing to do with with the actual power supply, but it was worth double checking that. So I started to do some capacitors and uh, I was getting bored, oh, but taking out capacitors and testing them is possibly the most boring job in the world. Uh, so my mind got distracted and I started to think, well, let's try and trace some wires up here, some, uh, some of the tracks up here. Now, the first few go to the other side of the board and that's fine because I've tested every one on this side of the board, that's fine. But now, as soon as I start to get onto the ones this side, I'm running into trouble. For example, now, I've got 14 and 16, which are not coming up where I think they should be. So, for example, now, if I was to go, I've got my meter on continuity, let's count 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This one here, okay? So, I'm going to put my meter there. It's definitely not ground. I can hear it when I go onto the pins underneath here. Listen there yeah but every single one that I trace hold on there but every single wire that I trace every single track that I trace it's not coming up anywhere I've gone across everything where I think these wires here are going it's very hard because they're so close together and I can't fully see which one it is but it's not coming up anywhere I've done the same on 16. 16 is also not coming up anywhere. So, one, well, I don't need to show you, 16 is not coming up. So what I'm thinking is, we know that we've got damage on the board underneath here, because I mean, you can see that there's just bits of damage everywhere. Maybe the wires are damaged from this side to the other side, because we've soldered on this side, but if the wire's not going from here to the other side, then there's gonna be no contact. Now. This may not be the actual fault where, for example, I don't think it's going to affect the RF. And still, it might not turn on apart from 1 in 20 times. But at least then when it does turn on, in theory, I should be able to see the game. So I think what I'm going to do is, and it probably will destroy it because I think it's going to be a nightmare. I think I'm going to try to take off this card slot here, which is going to be very hard because obviously these pins are absolutely tiny. But... If I can't find where they're going to on the other side, I physically need to take it off to examine it for damage and to possibly repair it. The only other thing would be to run a wire from here around the board to each of the other points. The problem with that is it's very hard to trace where each of these go because they're kind of hidden underneath. But then again, see, it's a toughie, isn't it? Because at least if I do it that way, See, if I take this card thing out, I probably will never get it working again. Maybe I should take the time to go from here and run wires round to the, the different points on the ones that are faulty. Do you know what? I'm going to think about it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Ideally, I would like to take it off, and then that way I could fully see what's going on with it. It's just that there's so much damage done to it already. Because look, can you see this kind of... Look, see, it's all brown around these areas here. So this is damage. So I reckon the, this is possible via damage, maybe. And all around here. Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Uh, nah. I'm not sure, but that's, that's where I am at the moment. Right, luckily, I didn't take it off. Looking really closely through here, the ones that look like they're coming from here are going to the pins above. So for example, now if I was to go to this one here, listen. Can you see? It's coming up on the pins above. Another one. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna go across each of the pads here and see where they're coming up. Uh, and then if I have a missing pad, maybe I can just trace that back. 
or I could even go onto each of these ones here and just keep rubbing along here until I get to where I uh, where I need to go. Ah, oh, this one's really. It kind of feels weird. This one. It feels like I've given up already on it, which is a shame. Anyway, I'll keep at it. I want to sort out this. I want to make sure that every single contact on here is doing something, and then that that means I'm kind of more happy with this, and I can start looking at other things. Oh my god, look at it. Oh my god. Right, what have I done? This is the annoying thing, I've done nothing. I've just turned it on and off multiple times. Multiple times. As well as that, I've been getting the IPA and I've been flooding it underneath the cart here and keep on cleaning it. And uh, look, there looks to be a lot of dirt underneath the cart. Can you see the black bits here? What is going on? Why has it come up now? Yeah, look, demo. Also, I've disconnected all my audio wires at the back here, so that's why there's no sound. Well, there's no point in getting my hopes up because I haven't done anything. Right, let's turn it off. So we know that that's in the right place now. Well, hold on, look. It's gone off now, hasn't it? And I haven't actually touched anything. Right, let's turn it off. And now, back on. See, nothing. Off. Back on. But at least there's hope now, isn't there? There's hope. So maybe it's nothing to do with the display. Maybe it's the, I don't know, maybe could it be some power issue? Nothing happening there now. Oh God, this is uh this is really testing this one. Really, really testing. Well, I suppose it's good that we had something there. Maybe I'm just going to keep. Maybe I'm just going to flood everything with IPA. I'm wondering if there's some old flux on here that's somehow conducting where it shouldn't be. Really don't know. Right, so uh, I'll get back to it when I have more information. I mean, it could be complete coincidence, but I'm just going to keep repeatedly cleaning this cart. Because the thing is, this is completely exposed, so all the dust and everything is constantly going to be gathering down here. Also, these are apparently self-cleaning, so the idea is that you're not supposed to have to clean the game carts here, because every time you push it in and out, it's supposed to clean itself. Just doing that very gently. Right, let's see now if that's going to make a difference. Right, let's put the game in and turn it on. Yes. Come on, come on. All right, but look, that was a black screen that time, wasn't it? It wasn't the red screen. So the game hasn't loaded, but... Hold on. Let's do it again. Turn it on. Okay, that's much more consistent than it was before. Yes! Okay, that's, that's, that's good. That's what it should be. Right, let's... Uh, I haven't got sound on it, remember? Okay, but it's not going any further than that at the moment. But that's okay. Right, let's turn it off. And now I'll turn it on again. Nothing. Just ah. Oh. Off and on. What could it be? 
I've measured all the capacitors, every single one for ESR. I haven't taken them all out, but every one of them is testing fine for ESR. What is causing this? Off. On. I don't know. I don't know. Is it the game card or card reader? The I don't know if that game slot is just a red herring. I don't know if that's anything to do with it, or is it just pure coincidence that when I'm cleaning it, I seem to have more life in it. Really, really don't know. So right now, it's not doing anything, and I haven't even moved that game. I haven't even moved the game. All right, let's put it in again. Turn it on. No. So right now, it's completely, completely dead again. Reading online, people say if there's a power issue that the green LED will be faint. Well, that's not faint at all. Uh, and I've measured around here. I've got 10 volts and 5 volts coming out of that. Or 10 volts, I think, going into it. 5 volts coming out. Well, I'll, I'll keep at it. But although I'm getting closer, I haven't actually done anything to fix this apart from cleaning it up. And right now it's completely gone again. It's really strange, isn't it? Say to me it's some sort of capacitor issue, but surely if they have gone faulty, then I'd have a ESR on them. Everyone's testing perfect, and you can see none of them have leaked. And there's no bulges anywhere on any of them. That makes me think it's not the capacitors. Oh, I don't know. Right, I'll. Uh, do you know what? This is. Uh, I've been on this for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours now. I'll keep at it. I really want to find out what it is. I wish I had another one so I could swap some parts over. Uh, this is really weird. I've been on the phone to Gadget UK 164 asking for advice because I'm kind of lost on this one. And when I was on the phone, I must have turned it on and off about 10 or 20 times and nothing was happening. I hung up the phone and now every single time I turn it on now, it's working. Watch this. And I haven't done anything to make it work. Ready? Green light here. Sound. You can hear the growl. I mean, I'm not complaining, but I want to know what it is that's happened. See? And now the game will load up. And I've just played the game. And the game was working. And now look, turn it off. Back on again. Every single time I do it, I do like that crowd. It's really strange. Uh, but anyway, I've got a few things that I can test. The only thing is, though, when something's working, it's kind of pointless testing because it's working right now. So I think I'm going to leave it for an hour or so and then see if it stops working again. Well, I've left it for an hour and a half and it's still working. So, and I mean I've had it off for an hour and a half. This is really weird. So every single time now, it's working fine but I haven't done anything to make it work. What I'm wondering now is, when I was chatting to Gadget UK, I was kind of moving things like this around to have a look around the place. I wonder, I wonder whether something was shorting out somewhere, because this is just really weird for it to only work like one in 20 or 40 times, and now every single time it's working. Also, the RF still isn't working, so if I was to plug in the RF, and uh, go on to here, it's still really fuzzy. So I might have a look at that next. So you can see it there, but it's just really fuzzy. And that's got nothing to do with tuning either. So maybe I might have a look at this thing here. I might unsolder these three pins here. There's two pins at the back holding the whole sort of, uh, you know, the whole shielding in. And I might have a look in there, see if I can find out what's uh, what's wrong with that.
Okay, so I've got this modulator out now. So hopefully I should be able to take this bottom case off. Yeah, so it comes off easy like that. Right, so this is it here. Maybe there's something in here causing the RF not to work properly, or maybe the signal's not getting to here for whatever reason. So speaking to Chris, that's Gadget UK, he said that the signal here will be like the composite signal, the same as the back here, and then this converts it to RF. So it puts in the audio and the video to output on, for example, a TV cable, the RF cable. Concentrating now on this little three pin connector here, see if we can get the RF working. So I need to find out, is the signal even getting there? Because we know the signal is outputting on AV, but what's happening with this one here? Now if you have a look, the one on the left hand side looks like it is the audio because I've got my speaker plugged into it with a 3.5 millimeter. So this is providing the amplification. And if you have a look now, if I put the tip to there, and if I get my tweezers and short between a ground and the ground of the 3.5 millimeter jack, you will hear it. In fact, you can probably already hear it a bit now. Yeah, so I'm just shorting between there and here. So we definitely know that that one there is audio. So now I'm thinking the middle one must be video. So now what I'm gonna do is make up a lead to go from the middle one to my TV. And let's see if we can get any signal. The problem is it's not gonna be amplified at all, is it? Uh, well, mind you, it's going to be AV from here. It's going to be normal composite. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try the middle pin now with a, with a makeshift lead. So you can see what I've done there. I've gone onto the middle pins there and the ground. And then this is just on a tiny little fly lead here. Just go into here, which then goes into a little RCA coupler, which then goes off to the yellow composite on the TV. And there's nothing coming up on the TV at all. Now, I don't know if I've done that correctly or not, but on this one here, we've got like near enough five volts. We know this is the audio, so I presume that must be the video, but yet there's nothing happening there. So that's not necessarily a bad thing because it might mean that this itself is okay. So what I need to do now is try to trace the other side of this pin to see where it goes to on the board, and maybe I can solder onto that point there. If it starts working there, then there might be a bad track. Now, isn't this interesting? From the middle pin here, it goes through the board, goes through a tiny little surface mount capacitor. So you can see uh, just that middle pin there. You've got a surface mount capacitor that joins it up to that rail there. But then look, it goes down here to that pin in between the two uh, legs of the capacitor, which is that little pin there. That little pin then goes along and it actually comes up on this one here. Now remember, this is the wire that was linked. It looked like it was done professionally from the factory, yeah? You know, the same way as this mod here and this wire here, yeah? Now, it looks a mess because I've been cutting it and adding solder. So I thought to myself, okay, I wonder ha what happens if I cut it. So I cut it and nothing happens. But now, as soon as I tap the capacitor on there, which this is the correct one from the schematic, it then starts working. So look, you know, the middle pin here goes into this here. This green lead goes off to the TV. So now let's turn this on here and uh, you can see nothing's happening on screen here, but watch this. As soon as I hit this capacitor on here, obviously I need to solder it in place. Bingo. Look at that. Yeah, take the capacitor off and it goes. Tap the capacitor back and it's back again. So now what is going on? What is going on? So when that's just joined together, because look, if I short that now with my tweezers, it will not work on the TV. So watch this. Short this with my tweezers here, yep. Yeah. Oh, it is working. It's working on the TV now. What on earth is going on? What is going on? That wasn't working a minute ago, and it is now. What? Well, I haven't done anything different. All I've done is cut that, and now I've joined it up again, and now it's working. Oh, this board is getting stranger and stranger all the time. Right, okay, let me resolder that, and now let's see if it works like it is set up, like it is now. Right, so I've resoldered it now, and <laughs> look, it's working. 
Oh, I mean, look, this is working every single time now, so you think I would be happy. The problem I've got is I haven't done anything to make it work. And even now, the RF, not the RF, the composite signal's working from there. But it wasn't working a minute ago when that was soldered. All I've done is cut it and now resolder it. So let's turn it off and let's turn it back on. Oh, unbelievable. So what is... Oh, this is just confusing me more and more. So it looks like the composite signal is getting into the AV, into the uh, RF box there. So now, because it's acting differently than it was a minute ago, I'm going to connect up the RF box again, and let's see what it does now. This is so strange. I've never had a, a fix-it video like this, where it just is so intermittent, and now it's just working constantly, and I've done nothing to make it work constantly. Really weird. All right, let's connect this up again, desolder this, and see what's happening now. I've temporarily just put it back on, I've just soldered up those ones there and I've just joined the ground just with a lump of solder. So I've got the red lead going into the RF on the TV and I'm on the analogue TV signal. So now let's turn it on and let's see what happens. Jaguar, I can see it, look. Oh look. Okay, but it's particularly noisy, isn't it? So why is that now? So there must be something in that box that is not working. Just looking at this modulator here, I changed this capacitor over. The one I took out was fine. It was smaller than this, hence the reason I bent this one over. But I thought it's just an easy thing to change out, even though it was measuring, I think it was 11 microfarad, this one's 10 microfarad, and the ESR was good on it. But one thing I have noticed is, if I was to go onto the outer shield in here, can you see like on the capacitors, like normal, there would just be one off the... Uh, one of the legs to ground, yeah. But look at this one here. Both legs are to ground. Now it's kind of hard to tell exactly where it goes because there's two coils here. Also, that coil looks kind of separated and spread out compared to these two. I don't quite understand what's going on there, and it looks like a load of solder mask has been put in there. Which doesn't look great, does it? But again, I think it's like that from the factory. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some hot air. I'm just going to remove this capacitor. That's if it is a capacitor, it looks like one. And then I'm just going to see what's happening. Is it shorting because of the coils? Or is it shorting because maybe the capacitor here is blown? So I'm just going to use a little bit of hot air and pop that out. Let's see if the capacitor itself is shorted. No, it hasn't. But these have. So it's not that, is it? I'm just trying to follow through. You see, the middle one is the video. I'm just trying to follow it through. So from here, it goes to resistor up to here. It looks like it travels across here. I'm just trying to go through the circuit. Oh well, okay. I'll pop that one back in. Okay, I found what the fault is. Well, when I say I found what the fault is, I know how to make it work, but I don't really understand what's happened. So as you can see, this is on RF. Still not looking good. If I was to go to input to AV, AV is still working perfect. Every time I turn this thing on, it works perfectly, but not on RF. But now, watch this. What I did is, to build up, let me tell you the build up, so, I know that there's a switch on the back here, not a switch, but a zero ohm resistor that changes it from 50 hertz to 60 hertz, so from PAL to NTSC. So, let me just show you which one that is. It is this little one here. Yep, yeah, this one here. Now, when I took that off, I then tuned in, because I thought, well, hold on a minute, NTSC. I wonder what could be NTSC. So I just tuned in to United Arab Emirates and it came up and it came up as NTSC and I thought, oh, that's interesting. So then I popped the resistor back in its place, the zero ohm resistor, 
and this time it said PAL, but it's still tuned in. And then I thought, oh, okay. So I tuned back into UK, and I still had the same rubbish that I've got going on the screen now. And then I thought, let's try Belgium. And Belgium worked. And then I thought, let's try Australia. And Australia worked. So it's something to do with the UK tuning that it's not happy with. But yet, on my Mega Drive, UK tuning works absolutely perfectly. I showed you it working at the beginning of the video, but also I've just plugged it in now and it is working. But watch this. Let me tune it into Australia. It will only take a, a few seconds because it picks it up straight away and then I can just cancel it. So if I go to menu and go to channel, and this time now I'm going to go to ATV analog and watch this. I'm going to go to Australia. Watch how quick it comes up. Ready? 1%, 2%, 3%. It's there. That's it. It's there. You've seen it. It's nice and colourful. So now I'm going to press menu to exit. Do you want to exit tuning? Yes. Now check it out. And I have sound and everything working through it. There. Let's exit that. There you go. <laughs> Not as nice as AV, but it's working. So now it's working on RF and it's working on AV. But it doesn't matter how many times I tune it in, so it's, a, it's a lot better on AV. But no matter how many times I tune it in on the UK one, it will not work. And it's not my TV. So now I'm wondering, is it something to do with... Are these not region locked as far as games are concerned, but maybe this is a European model that's not compatible with the UK? I really haven't got a clue what's happening. Now, what I did is, just to sort of uh, try and learn a little bit, you know this little RF thing down here? I put it up on its end just to uh, allow me to get access to the screw on the other side. So you can see I've just soldered it up like this for the time being with a little link for the ground. But you see this one here, this little screw, just in here, the screw here. So what happens is when I turn that a full turn, I made sure I put it back to where it was, but when I turned it a full turn, bit by bit, it started to lose reception. Then I turn it back and reception would come back. Then I'd go the other way, so for example, counterclockwise, and again, it would lose reception. So it looks like if I was to turn this and retune it, then it would tune in to a different channel. So this must kind of change the frequency to change the channels. But I haven't mucked around with it too much because I don't want to break it. But when I uh, turned that and tuned it into the UK one again, it still didn't work. So why is it working on other countries and not the UK? It must be to do with the frequencies. So I'm wondering if maybe, because obviously I don't know the background of this one and Mike brought it from eBay. I'm wondering if this was, for example, like brought over from another country. And that's the reason it's not working in the UK when it comes to RF. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this back in properly like it should be, solder it all down, put the case back on, give it a nice good clean, and then I'll finish up the video with it you know, playing the game. I might even try to connect it up to another TV in the house to see whether it will connect up via RF on another TV. So that's the frame all closed up again. These are twisted back round and all the bits are going all the way around. I mean, to be fair to it, it does seem like it's nicely made. So now I'm going to put the outer plastic casing on. I forgot to mention earlier, I've unsoldered those two bridging pins at the back there. So now it will only turn on when you've got a game in here. As soon as you take the game out, it will turn off. Okay, so this is interesting. Basically, when I tune it in to RF, it doesn't always work on the TV that I'm tuning it into. So for example, I tried setting this up downstairs and it didn't work. Brought it up to a bedroom TV and it worked absolutely fine. So what I'm wondering is, we know that it doesn't work on the PAL normal standard frequencies, but yet when I do it on certain TVs, it does work. So I'm thinking that maybe the UK frequency is so large, and then maybe in Australia it's slightly over to this way, and then other countries might have a larger base of frequencies. And depending on the TV, maybe some TVs have a narrow range of frequencies, and some have a larger range of frequencies depending on what country they're sold in. Maybe if they're sold worldwide, they have a huge range of frequencies. Rather than having individual sets for different countries, Maybe that's how it works. Then you might have other countries that may only make the TV, for example, just for the UK. That's all I can think of because this is really weird how 
The same Atari Jaguar, which is just there, will work on some TVs and not other TVs on RF. Now, when it comes to AV, it works on absolutely everything. And AV is a nicer picture because you have less, there's just less noise on it. And apparently, if you go over to RGB or S-Video, it's even better again. But for the purpose of this video, I'll just stick with the AV here. So as you can see, AV's working there. And if I go to Source and go over to TV, you can see it's working here. The other thing that I find strange is that when I tune it in, it doesn't just come up with one channel, it comes up with various different channels. So normally if I just plug in the Mega Drive, which is the Sega Genesis, it will just come up with the one channel on analog. But here it came up with, I think it was, well there we go, there was five channels that it came up with, yeah? But only one of them are working, but you can see this one here is noisy, just like it was when I tuned it in on the UK version of the small TV I was doing my testing on. So if at the very beginning I had plugged this into this TV, I'm now wondering whether it would have worked or not. So this whole thing for me has just been a massive big confusion. Was there anything ever wrong with this? But I, when I took it apart, I didn't do anything to damage it and it would only give me the red screen every now and then. But was it a combination of the fact that it wasn't tuning in properly and then maybe it could have been a dirty car contacts. Could it have been as simple as that? And by me repeatedly cleaning the car, that's got it working. The weird thing is, when I jump at those pins at the bottom, it still wouldn't turn on most of the time. Maybe one in 20 or one in 30 goes. So what's that about? Surely by having those pins joined at the bottom, it should turn on every time to a red screen, regardless of how dirty that game cart slot is. So what I'm wondering is, was there something underneath that game cart slot that was causing some kind of corrosion between the pins? Because I was rubbing my, uh, I was putting alcohol down there and then I was rubbing my tweezers up and down there and there was black stuff coming out. So maybe there was a slight bit of corrosion down there which was shorting out the pins but every now and then it was allowing it to turn on. That's all I can think because as I say, I've done nothing to fix this and I promise you now, every single time I turn this on and off, whether it's on RF or AV at work. So watch this, this is on RF. I'm turning it off now and I'll turn it back on. Every single time it's worked now and that didn't happen before. Yeah, you can see again now working fine. And again, if I go over to AV, let's leave it on AV now because there's a nicer picture. Right, so we're on AV now. And if I turn it off, let's give it a bit of volume so you can hear the roar and I won't, I won't speak over it. Ready now? There you go. I was waiting for that roar. For me, it was worth doing it just to see this startup screen. Lovely. So, uh, yeah, that, that's it. Now, I've been had a little play with this game. And... Uh, yeah, basically, let me just show you it. It's a really unusual controller. So the middle one's fire, I think one slows you down and one zooms you in. Sorry, makes you go faster and one makes you go slower. I've never seen this game before. And then when you hit these buttons down here, it can change the view and you get your crosshairs and stuff like that. So if you have a look now, you can see going that way. And I think this one, that makes me go fast. And this one makes me go slow. Oh, backwards, there you go, and slow. And then I think you have to like shoot things. I need to find out what this game is about. I don't know whether it's cheap because it's a, a game that's not popular and nobody wants it, or whether it's cheap because it was very popular and uh, everybody has it, so that it's not rare. Let me slow down a bit so I can actually shoot something. And then that little green monster, or friend, or alien, whatever it is in the top right hand corner tells me well done every now and then. And if I hit these buttons here, which one is it now? There you go, you see I've got a crosshair, and I think this is like a first person view. Press it again, it's like that, and then I think other ones do a side view. There you go, can you see there? Side view. So that is it. If it fails again in a few weeks or months then I can always do a revisit video on it and maybe I'll be able to find out what's happened then. So uh, that is it for this video if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up big thanks to Mike for sending it out to me and I look forward in the future to possibly 
repairing another Atari Jaguar and maybe having a bit more of a conclusive outcome. Take care. Bye now. Thank you.